Welcome and thanks for joining us. In this presentation, we are going to talk about email marketing. It's not the sexiest topic, but if you can master the process, you will sell easier, you will sell more, and you will grow your wedding business. We are all wedding professionals and we love doing weddings. But in order to do what we do, we first have to find someone to buy what we sell. And that makes us marketers. And marketers mess everything up. We always have. We get a great advertising opportunity, then we use it, then we overuse it, and eventually it doesn't work very well. For example, billboards. In 1835, a circus put up the first billboard in the United States. Today, there are a half million of them. The first radio commercial ran in 1922. Now, stations run 15 to 20 minutes of commercials every hour. When a new radio station launches, they often play 10,000 songs in a row, commercial-free. The message they are sending is that commercials are bad, music is good, Listeners believed them, and they just moved on to satellite and online music services that have far less advertising. The first online banner ad ran in 1994. Today, Google serves up 30 billion banner ads per day, but the average click-through rate is only six one-hundredths of a percent. Ad blocking by consumers is up 40% in the last year, and half of the clicks on mobile banner ads are done by accident. The first Facebook ad ran in 2004. Today, there are more than 4 million active Facebook advertisers. Demand for Facebook ads is increasing, but the supply pretty much stays the same. So guess what? The prices are constantly going up. 30 years ago, people used to get excited when they logged on to AOL and heard those infamous three words, You've got mail. So when was the last time you got excited about receiving an email? The average consumer receives 88 emails in a day. The average business, 121. And two-thirds of them are never opened. Yes, marketers have messed up email too. In this video, I'm going to talk about email and how it can still work for your business if you do it right. We'll go over some technical things that can make your emails work better. I'm going to share the two types of marketing emails and how they are different. We'll talk about how you can improve the content of your emails and make them more powerful. We'll talk about 10 secret weapons that can make email work better for you. And we'll look at some ways to maximize the value of your email list by doing things that go beyond simply sending emails. Let's get the mechanical boring stuff out of the way. It's kind of like an alphabet soup. You have SPF, DKIM, DMARC, ADSP. These are all systems that have been put in place to fight spam. For example, SPF, it's an SPF record. It is code that goes on your website that tells the various email services that it's okay for a third party like Constant Contact or Roebly to send emails on the behalf of your domain name. I could spend a long time explaining these systems. It would be boring and you're gonna do a lot better to just ask your webmaster or Google these terms and find out more than you ever wanna know. When you receive an email, sometimes you will see at the top of that email a big list of everybody that that email was sent to. That is a really bad idea in marketing emails when you're sending to an unrelated group of people because anybody who gets it can hit reply all 
and perhaps do some damage. When you are sending advertising emails, you have three choices. You can put them in the two line, the CC line, or the BCC line. You should always use the third one, the BCC line. That way, the reader will not receive a big list of all of the other people that you sent that email to. HTML versus text. An HTML email is simply one that has graphics versus a text email that is just text. Either one of them can be effective if done properly. A lot of people block images from being loaded into their emails automatically, especially when they are reading their emails on a phone. It saves bandwidth, it cuts their phone cost. And so when an email message with graphics appears on the phone of someone who has blocked the images, they will see the little question mark box and up in the corner they will see some text. That text is the name of the image file, the name that you've assigned to that image that you have placed into your email. As you'll see in this example, the names are kind of boring. 007 and backdrop. If you change the file names of your images to something that is more descriptive and more enticing, that will potentially make the reader click that button to load the images and they can see the true beauty of your email. Can spam. The Can Spam Act is legislation that is put in place to fight spam. Make no mistake, if you are sending advertising emails to people who have not specifically requested information from you, you are spamming. I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm just saying that you are spamming. And there are laws to address that. The really the two things that you need to worry about here doesn't mean you can't send these emails. You just have to do two things. In your email, you have to have a way for the person to opt out of your emails if they choose to do that. And then, of course, you need to honor that request. And you also need to put your physical mailing address on the bottom of the email. Do those two things and you're pretty much covered as far as the can spam legislation. All right, the alphabet soup is out of the way. Let's move on to something better. Let's move on to the 10 email secret weapons. Secret weapon number one is your email address. Does your email address end in AOL, Yahoo, Hotmail, or Gmail? If so, do you know how that makes you look? It makes you look out of touch and not as professional. You should use an email address that includes your domain name, you at yourcompanyname.com. It is very easy to set up. You don't have to get rid of your existing AOL Gmail email account. You just forward these emails sent to you at yourcompanyname.com to your regular email account. Makes you look so much more professional. Number two, make your emails mobile friendly. The majority of emails are viewed on a phone. Assume that everyone who sees your email is seeing it on a phone and design your email accordingly. Number three, use email to drive traffic to your website. Use your emails to drive click-throughs to your website. This is really important and we'll talk about why in just a few minutes. Number four, your signature file. Your signature file is the bottom part of your email that contains your contact info. It is the single most underutilized piece of real estate in an email. Use it as part of the sales process. In your signature file, you can put your contact info, your phone number, your cell number, your web address, your social media links. You can put a special offer or some sort of a free report that they receive by clicking a link. 
You can put a link to videos or to your social media. You can put an inspirational quote that gives you some personality. And of course, you can put your best of weddings or couples choice award banners in your signature file as well. Number five, autoresponders or away messages. If you use an autoresponder, look at it as another tool in your sales process. Here's an auto reply that I saw a few days ago. Thank you for your email. Please know that I am only able to sit down with my inbox about once a week. If this is a client concern or a message that requires an immediate response, please reach out to my management team. For all other things, I'll reply as soon as I'm able. Concerns? You have concerns? You have customers with concerns? I'm out of here. Here's another one. We will respond to your email every Thursday of the following week. If you require a faster response, call us Monday through Friday between 5.30 p.m. and 8 p.m. Thank you, your happiness team. Huh, well, I'd be happy too if I only had to answer emails once a week and only worked two and a half hours a day. How about something like this instead? Hello, and thanks for your email. I'm out of the office right now, but we'll get back to you as soon as I can. It's my goal to get back to you within the next 24 hours, but if you need something right now, please call me at, and then you give a good contact number. Number six, your subject line and the first line of your email. These two things impact the open rates of your emails more than anything else. The first line of your email is just important as a subject line because a lot of people see it in their preview of your email. If you're looking for good subject lines, just Google good subject lines and you'll find list after list after list. Try out various versions of subject lines just to see which one gets you the highest open rate. You might want to try using the first name of the person you're sending an email to in the subject line. You can automate that process. Use action words or phrases, things like, you'll love this, you'll never guess, things like that can help the open rate. And also, using the word video in caps, in brackets, has shown to open the, or to increase the open rate of your emails. Just make sure you have a video in the email. Number seven, use a countdown clock. If you're sending an email with some sort of an offer that has a deadline, you can drive home that deadline by including a countdown clock in your email. You can get one of these for free. It's very simple to drop into your email. Go to sendtrick.com. You can choose the background. You can choose the text color. It generates some code that you then drop into your email. Number eight, use an email marketing platform. These are services such as Robly, Constant Contact, Mad Mimi. They're not all that expensive. They are worth the investment if you are serious about email marketing because they allow you great reporting and they allow you to generate beautiful emails. You'll get stats on open rates. You'll get data as to exactly who opened your emails. You'll get to see what links they clicked on it's great reporting that can help you improve your email marketing program. Number nine, preview your email on various devices. Your email may look great on your computer, but it's going to look a little bit different on someone else's computer, different operating systems, whether it's a desktop, big monitor, small monitor, whether it's a tablet, whether it's a phone, a small phone, a large phone, you get my point, emails rendered differently across devices. Services such as putsmail.com allow you to upload your email and see how it renders on various devices. 
And last but not least, number 10, use puppies. You might laugh, but there's research that shows that using puppies, especially dressed as humans, is very popular and could increase the effectiveness of your email message. And at the very least, it'll be eye-catching and something that they're not seeing in every other email they've received that day. There are two types of emails, of business to consumer emails. There are mass emails that are sent to a mailing list, and there are one-on-one -on -one emails. That's an exchange between you and a prospective customer where you answer their questions and try to convince them to do business with you. You're asking the engaged couple to trust you with one of the most important days of their lives. You're asking them to spend hundreds or thousands of dollars with you. Before a couple buys your product or service, they want a personal connection with you. They are only going to buy your product or service if they like you, if they trust you, and if they feel comfortable with you. Email is one of the least personal communication methods. So see the disconnect? Convincing a prospective customer to select you over everyone else usually requires something more personal than an email. If a prospective customer tells you that they prefer or demand to do everything by email, then by all means abide by their wishes. But email communication at this stage of the process should be viewed as a last resort. Most wedding professionals have a much higher closing rate if they can get the couple to meet with them face to face or at least talk on the phone. Do whatever you can to get an in-person meeting. Your results will be much better. But when you do use email for the sales process, here are some tips. You need to respond promptly. Just because a prospective customer is talking to you right now, that does not mean that they are not talking to others. In fact, just given how the wedding planning process works, the person that's communicating with you is doing that because what you sell is next on their to-do list. They are talking to other people. If you are delayed in responding to them, if it takes too long to get back to them or your emails seem rushed and hurried, they're just gonna move on to somebody else. Trust me, they are talking to other people at the same time. When writing an email, you need to mirror their writing style. If they write short, your response should be short. If they write in a more detailed way, your response should be more detailed also. You just need to mirror their writing style. Keep notes over the sales process. Little things about them or about their wedding. Drop one of these little things into each email it's more personal and it lets them know that you're writing this just for them. Of course, check for typos and grammatical errors. Always include a call to action. Call to action is simple. What you want them to do next is that to make an appointment, schedule a tasting, take advantage of our offer. Some sort of call to action is a must. And finally, Always end your emails with a question. It keeps the dialogue between you and the prospective customer going. All right, next we're gonna move on to advertising emails. Email advertising to a mailing list of prospective customers is inexpensive, it's pretty much free, and it allows you to cast a very wide net as you're trying to find new customers. So where do you get those email lists? The big wedding websites generally don't share them, but some local wedding magazines and websites still do. 
You can share lists with other wedding professionals. Just make sure that they're allowed to share those lists. There are brokers that use that, that sell lists. Uh, my company, we used to buy them uh, with the emphasis on used to because the quality of them uh, is not nearly as good as it used to be. So where do you get these? Um, you can collect email addresses from your website. You can do a pop-up window that offers something of value to the viewer if they provide their name and email address. This turns a cold lead into a warmer prospect. Wedding shows are also one reliable source for lists of brides and grooms. Most shows provide exhibitors with a list of their attendees. So when you're sending emails to a big list, what sort of response rate should you expect? I recently gave this presentation at Wedding MBA to an audience of a few hundred people. It's a little tough to do in this video, but I will describe what I did and what happened. I ask everyone in the room to stand up. And then I said, if you never ever read any advertising emails, then sit down. Few people sat down. Next question. Let's say that you get an email from a company you don't recognize and with whom you've never done business. If you delete that email without reading it, then sit down. Bunch more people sat down. You get on your computer in the morning or after having been out for a while. You have a bunch of advertising emails in your inbox. If you hit delete, delete, delete without even reading those emails, then sit down. More people sat down. You get an email for something you don't need or already have. If you delete that email, then sit down. Well, as you can guess, at this point, there were just a handful of people still standing. Is it any surprise that your response rate is so low when you send advertising emails? Just because you are a wedding professional sending an email to someone who is planning a wedding, this does not mean that you have an automatic right of having your email opened. When you're doing email advertising, your biggest competitor is not other companies like yours. It is the delete button. Now, do you really want to know the number one reason why most emails sent by wedding professionals to engaged couples do not perform very well? It's because they're bad. Really bad. Why? Here is an email that I received recently. I only changed the name. Hi, I'm John Smith from John Smith Photography, and I have a great deal for you. Our wedding packages include two photographers, eight hours of coverage, unlimited photos, online gallery, all editing and post-production, link to download all high-res files, and copyrights to all photos. The price for this package is $29.50. Only half of this is due with contract. The rest is not due till the week of your wedding. We accept all major credit cards. If you wish to discuss further, please let me know. My website and link to reviews are below. As of now, your date is still available. Thanks. You have just asked her to marry you before you've even had a first date. They don't know you. You don't know if they need what you sell. But your email jumps right into buy from me. No one makes a purchase of hundreds or thousands of dollars as a result of a single email from someone they have never heard of, especially if it's a bad email. Is it any surprise that these types of emails don't work very well or don't work at all? Have you ever read books, seen videos, or heard podcasts from Gary Vaynerchuk? 
If not, you should check him out. Gary V talks about the concept of jab, 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 right hook, just like in boxing. You give your prospect something, then you give them something else, and then you give them something else. Jab, jab, jab. Once you have softened them up, once they like you, once they trust you, then right hook, you go in for the sale. So what can you give them? You can give them useful planning information. Remember, the couple is usually buying something that they have never purchased before and they need and want information on how to buy. Here we have a timeline for planning a destination wedding. Very, very valuable content that was provided by this travel professional before they even asked for the sale. Now, I would take this and turn it into a report, make the prospect request that report by giving their email, by visiting your website, and then provide the report. It's great content. That would be a little bit better way to use it. Here's the same sort of email sent by a photographer, and it is 12 questions you must ask your wedding photographer using a little bit of fear. Fear is a powerful motivator. Show the prospect what could go wrong and how those things won't go wrong when they work with you. Same thing here. I would have turned this into a report. Here we have an invitation to an event, an interactive floral design workshop. We're not just trying to sell wedding flowers here. We're inviting your, you in. We're showing you how the process works, you like us, and then ultimately, hopefully, you'll do business with us. Here's another example. This one combines the jabs and the right hook into one email. It is beautifully designed. They have a special offer. They have a call to action, schedule an appointment. They tell a little bit about what they provide and then ultimately, they follow that up with a little bit of emotion and links to social media. It is a beautiful email. Here's another example. This one gives some quotations, a testimonial at the beginning, the social proof. Hey, someone else liked you. I probably will too. Then they have some links to some news and some articles. Not everything is wedding related, but it is information that the reader may find to be valuable. And then after they have done that, they talk a little bit about the company and what they do for weddings. If you'd like an easy way for your email to stand out, just use a GIF at the top of your email. A GIF is simply a graphic file. It's a slideshow that repeats over and over again if you set it up to do that. And you are just, uh, it's something that jumps out uh, graphically and can make your email more effective. Videos are very popular in email marketing. And you don't actually put the video in the email. It would be huge. You would put the video on YouTube or Vimeo, create a screenshot, and then link to that video in your email. And in this case, they used a GIF that looks like the video playing, and you click on it, and you get to go watch the actual video. And then they follow up with their contact information. Here's an email that we did at our company, The Wedding Experience. We are promoting wedding shows. And this was a promotional email about our show that was coming that week. The email doesn't start off with the right hook of buy. We show graphically what the show is all about. We have some copy that tells what the show is about the various things that you will enjoy when you come to it, things that you can receive when you come to it. So we have given them all of these things that are going to happen. And then 
we tell them about the event, where it is, when it is, and now we are giving the hook, which is to purchase tickets, another jab, an offer code where they can save some money on those tickets, the call to action, the link to the tickets. And then if they're still reading the email, we're selling them a little bit more. And then we also have some links to some videos about the show. We give them some more information, a link to the website, and the email wraps up. Not everyone will make it all the way to the bottom. So front load your most important information at the top third, top half of the email. Are you marketing to an attendee list from a wedding show? I caution you to not start your email. It was nice to meet you at the show because you don't necessarily know that you actually met them at the show. One trick to use is to take a picture of your booth at the show, preferably with your staff in that picture, and then use that picture in your post-show email marketing. That way the reader can say, hey, I remember them, I remember that booth. Most lists include a wedding date. The good lists do. It's actually a great list if the wedding date is included because you now not only have a name and you know that they're planning a wedding and that they're probably spending some money, but you also know by when they are going to spend that money. Now, you know your business. You know that there is a typical lead time that people first contact you. For some businesses, it might be six months, it could be 12 months, it could be three months, but you're going to have an average. So when you're trying to market to a list, a great strategy is to time your emails to the time that that person, based on their wedding date, is probably going to be in the market for what you sell. And by doing that, you will hit them with your message at a time they need you or are likely to need you and your results will be improved. There are a few different emails, uh, a few different companies that send some great emails. I suggest that you go online, subscribe to their emails because they're clean, they're modern, and they are using the latest in best practices for email marketing. Woman Getting Married is one, Guilt City, G-I-L-T City, Pure Wow, and Brides Magazine, brides.com. They do some great wedding-related emails also. All right, we're wrapping things up with some ways that you can leverage your email list, ways that you can use those lists to maximize their value and ways that go beyond actually sending just another email to the names on that list. You can use your lists, list of email addresses or list of phone numbers to create an audience on Facebook. You would upload those names to the Facebook ads manager. They will search for matches and then you can advertise to that audience. You can also do exactly the same thing with Google AdWords. You upload your list, Google finds them, and then you can do search or display ads to those people. I mentioned earlier about using your email list to drive people to your website. If you set up your site to collect cookies, which is another name for browsing behavior, you can then serve remarketing banner ads or Google search result ads to the people that have visited your site. You can do this through Google AdWords. I would suggest starting this now. You get some code from Google, you place that code on your website, and it will take a while, but ultimately you will build up a pool of prospects, people that have visited your site, 
and then you can use Google AdWords to remarket it to them. You can also set up what's known as a drip campaign. A drip campaign is an automated program that sends a series of emails to your prospective customers. In this series of emails, you can do your jab, jab, jabs, giving them helpful information about the planning process, about your company in small doses that are delivered over the course of a few days or a few weeks. It's a very simple process. I like the company getresponse.com. You can design these emails once. You set up your flow as to how you want them sent out. And then all you have to do on an ongoing basis is to upload your list to that site and then it will automatically send those emails in whatever series or whatever order and with whatever timing you have set up as part of this. It can be very effective for driving home your message in small doses over time with a prospective customer. Email is great and email is free. However, an alternative to that is the old school direct mail. Direct mail absolutely cost more, a lot more than sending emails. However, the end result might be worth it. Think about this. It takes 90 seconds from the time someone pulls your mailing piece out of their mailbox to the time that they get to their nearest trash can. 90 seconds. Doesn't sound like a lot, but it's 89 more seconds than you have with an email when someone just clicks delete, delete, delete. You have more time to capture their attention and doing direct mail marketing may bring you results that work and that are cost effective even though the process does cost more money. One final way to leverage your mailing lists is through text messaging. Now, when you get a list that has phone numbers, you can pretty much assume that those phone numbers are cell numbers. And so you can text to those numbers. Now, text message advertising is about the most intrusive of all forms of advertising, much more intrusive than sending a direct mail piece, much more intrusive than sending an email. So you have to do it carefully. You don't wanna do it often and you need to offer something really good because you're intruding into their space with a text message. Well, that brings us to the end of our presentation. I do hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that you learned a few things about improving your email marketing. If you have any questions at all, feel free to reach out to me at info at weddingshowpros.com. If you are looking to grow your business and would like to consider doing so through participation in a wedding show, please check out weddingshowpros.com where you will find a list of show producers throughout the country. Thank you and successful selling.